So we had talked a few weeks ago about recycling in general, how it's a hoax that was played on us by uh, the plastics industry, which it pretty much is. And um, unfortunately, in, in a lot of ways, recycling is more expensive than creating virgin plastic. And anytime creating something new is more expensive than recycling what already exists, we know where the businesses are gonna go. They're gonna tell you to throw away what you've got and they're just gonna replace it with new stuff. So I was uh, surprised this week when I saw in uh, biz inside Indiana business, which I didn't know was a, was a thing, but um, so I'm from Indiana and I thought this was pretty interesting. In my home state, the Northeast Indiana in a town called Ashley, Indiana, a a uh, California-based company called Brightmark Energy is putting the final touches on a $260 million plastics to fuel plant. And they're almost finished with it. They're, they're, um, they're gonna have it started up. They're hoping by the end of this year. And they say that by the end of next year, they should be able to run at full capacity of converting 100,000 tons of plastic into what they are calling ultra low sulfur diesel fuel and naphtha, naphtha, naphtha. naphtha. And, and then and then also some commercial grade wax. Um, so basically what they're going to do is they're gonna, they should be able to take again, 100,000 tons of plastic and they're targeting the Chicagoland area. Um, they also mentioned um, areas like Detroit and Gary that um, they can collect the plastics from there and then they literally break them down first by tearing them into pellets and then they apply heat and, and other things um, and they convert them into the various gases, liquids and waxes. And then that stuff can be sold to commercial um, industries for you know, various uses. Now, my hope is that if they get this dialed in, then hopefully this type of plastics breakdown can be, um, you know, scalable and re um, what, what am I, what am I getting at? They could pop these up anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Basically uh, repeatable. And so maybe we could actually find a, uh, a situation in which recycling, breaking down and reselling these things will pre create a business model that is more attractive than throwing away what we've got and, uh, and making new plastic. Biggest issue we do have is that a lot of people don't know what their municipalities can recycle. So this is great. I love the whole idea, especially the fact that we can convert it into fuel, but expanding the total amount of plastics that we can do this too, as well as educating the public about how to participate in this is going to be, is going to be a big task. Right. And it's not, um, yeah, education is the huge thing because when we talk about even, you know, reducing energy consumption, uh, you know, electricity consumption and putting in LEDs, for example, to reduce the demand, well, that opens up a can of worms because some people are saying, well, now that the LEDs consume less electricity, I can leave them on 24 hours a day, which completely offsets the fact that you're running energy efficient LEDs. Now I use that as an example because if we bring highly efficient plastic recycling factories online, that doesn't mean we can consume more plastic. That's where the education needs to come in. Says you. Damn it. Oh, yes, I'm such a socialist. No, I, I mean, Tony, that's a really good point in that we do tend to, um, hey, I'm getting 50 miles to the gallon. I can drive more now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but <laughs> the point was to burn less fuel too. I, I mean, the other thing is to bring in, you almost have to have some sort of regulation. You've got to have the, the people that are manufacturing products uh, required to buy certain types so it can be recycled because uh, if there's a cheaper price elsewhere or from another state they're going to buy it from there make their product and it's not recyclable like it's you almost have to close loop the system in the first place 
to uh, to allow us uh, all to have a chance at this. Uh, almost like uh, you know when we uh, when when there is a uh, a deposit paid on a bottle or a can or something, mm -hmm. they typically get recycled. But yeah. if if people just have the ability to go anywhere they want and get a cheaper price, it's going to be difficult to, uh, you know, have the resources renewable. Right. Yeah. I'm with Mark. They need like a plastic tax on any plastic you buy that encourages you to collect it and recycle it. The yeah. consumer pays tax. for it. And that's, you know, that's part of, but they also get it back uh, if they return it to the proper uh, deposit right. area. And uh, that would be helpful to allow at least the sorting uh, to be correct because it could come to a central depot that, that handles, okay, the green bottles go here and the pop bottles go here and we do this with that bottle. And, uh, you know, having that type of uh, uh, uniformity uh, would certainly help the recycling ability and would also help the plants that uh, recycle it because they could get it in mass from less... Uh, I guess, less multiple locations. I wonder if they could do something like an RFID or NFC uh, where they could just have a machine sort them without even having to measure I'm sure them. that could be part of the UPC yeah. code too, yeah. if, if yeah. they were still on them. Yeah, right. people tend to rip those off, yeah. You know, assuming that this Brightmark company is, you know, is making money on what they're selling, then they could very seriously get into the recycling business themselves have people pay for the recycling service they could collect the materials break it down and then sell it to the the end businesses the, the trucks that haul the stuff to their plant right right and i mean that's that's exactly it it's, it's sort of the salvation army model right i mean people show up and they donate stuff for free and then they turn around and sell it and they make money off of that so if we could, if they, they can spin this up and make it profitable, then it, you know, it could become a um, whole funding closed cycle like, like Mark was talking about. Well, especially if you put hundreds of them around the country so that stuff doesn't have to be transported great distances to get recycled. Yeah. Yeah. And even on, you know, a place like Chicago, that's, you know, that's massive. You could have three or four located, you know, right. South side, two on the West, yeah. one on the North, um, none on the east side that, you know, they tried building there once, it didn't work. But, um, you know, just to handle the amount of um, plastic and trash that comes out of these, these huge cities. Well, another good aspect of this that, um, you know, is not necessarily tied just to the sustainability part is that they're partnering with um, a company called Recycle Force which brings inca formerly incarcerated men and women back into the workforce with job training, case management, mm -hmm. mentorship, and then guiding them into job opportunities. And I think that's also a great, a great part of it because we think a lot about how we are supposed to reclaim stuff, but one of the greatest things we could do is reclaim a life that has gone off track and help them stay on track. So, Thumbs up all around on that side of it too.